bus channels, mix buses, sub-mix buses. In music production you hear these terms all the time. But what do they mean? What is a sub-mix bus? And why would you use it? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, my name is Percy Jules and today I'm gonna talk about submix buses, bus channels. So what are they and when would you use them? Uh, this is actually not a very complicated subject, but it is a very, very common uh, technique in music production. So I think it's, um, it's worth to at least talk about it for once. Now, like in most cases, the best way to explain would be by example. So let's take a look at this song setup I've just created. As you can see, I've created some tracks here. So I have eight drum tracks. So a kick track, snare, hi-hat, crash, three toms and a percussion track. I also have a bass track, a piano track and a guitar track. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first show you real quickly how to set up a submix bus or a bus channel. Then I'm going to tell you what I've done, so what has changed. Uh, in fact, and then I'm going to talk about some examples of why it might be useful to you. Okay, by the way, in this example I'm using Studio One Professional, but this is a very, very universal concept that can literally be applied to any DAW you use. Okay, let's go. Now let's say that we want to route all of the drum tracks to a submix bus. Okay, now first notice that the output for all of these tracks is set to main out, which means that the output of these tracks is being sent straight to the master track. Okay, now to create a submix bus, that's real easy. First thing to do is to select all of the tracks that we want to include into this submix bus. So first click the first track and then shift click the last track. Um, right click and then go to add bus for selected channels. Now click that and as you can see a bus channel has already been created. Now what has actually happened? What has changed? Well first thing you might notice is that the output for all of these drum tracks now no longer says main out. The output for these tracks is now being sent to what we call a bus and in this case as you can see bus 1. If we take a look at the bus channel we've just created and take a look at the input for this channel, it also says bus 1 and the output says main out. Now what does this all mean? Now it means that the output for these drum tracks is now no longer being sent straight to the master track. It is still being sent to the master track but it is now kind of taking a detour and it is first going to this bus channel. Okay, now let's talk about some of the reasons why it might be useful to use a submix bus. Now, first of all, it makes it very easy to control things like volume for an entire section. So, for instance, let's say that for some reason we have a perfectly balanced submix for only the drum sounds. Okay, so the individual volume settings for the individual drum sounds are perfect in relationship to all the other individual drum sounds. So a perfectly balanced submix. Only now you realize that the drum section as a whole is just a little bit too quiet or a little bit too loud in relationship to the rest of the song. Now, it might be a major hassle to try to adjust all the faders on those individual tracks to try to achieve that same perfect balance only now a little bit louder or a little bit quieter. It would be much easier to simply adjust the volume settings on the bus channel. You know, so no matter what happens you will maintain that same perfect balance only now you simply make it a little bit louder or you make it a little bit quieter very easily. Now another reason might be this. Let's say that we want to have an effect on the entire drum section. Okay, now instead of adding an effects plugin to all of the individual drum tracks, we can simply add an effect to this bus channel. You know, so for instance, let's say that we want to have an EQ. Okay, we can just bring in an EQ on this channel, adjust some settings and this will affect the entire drum section. The same would be true if we add a compressor or any other effect, obviously. And this will potentially save you a lot of work and a lot of time. And it will also be uh, a bit more CPU friendly. 
Now, another good reason for using submix buses is for organizational purposes. So let's say that you have 10, 15, 20 drum tracks, you have four guitar tracks, you have three synthesizer tracks, in that case, it might be a good idea to use submix buses for all those different groups. And that way your mix might become a little bit more organized and that way it might also uh, make the mixing process a little bit easier. And also if you use things like send effects, I actually did a few videos on insert effects and send effects not too long ago. So once again, uh, a send effect, basically you have a signal, you create a copy of that signal, that copy is being processed a little differently and further on in the mix, uh, the original and the copy are being joined back together, thereby creating a certain effect. Now, in most cases, the combination of those two signals is perceived as one sound. So, in my opinion, I think that if possible, it is a very, very good idea to join the two signals back together before they get to the master track. Uh, and the way to do that is to use a mix bus. And that way you can actually uh, treat the combination of those two as one signal, as one sound. And that way you can easily adjust the volume or add effects. Okay, so in conclusion, mix buses, bus channels, they're usually very easy to set up, no matter what DAW you use. Uh, there are also some very good reasons why you would want to use them. They can make life just a little bit easier for you. Okay, well, that's about it for now. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. Music